good to go. Okay, cool. So let's get started. All, All right. right. What questions do we have? What questions do we have? <clears throat> From Kathy Wallace, she says, I have a year old lab which continues to jump up on people and eat socks. Uh, how to correct this behavior? We've had her since eight weeks and she's already done puppy classes. Okay. Um, Kathy Wallace, that sounds really familiar. Have I worked with you before? Did you have a miniature dachshund? I can't remember its name, but it was a little brown, reddish dachshund. Um, and we did private lessons, but this could have been a completely different Kathy Wallace. I don't know. Um, so let me know if you're her or not, just, just to help my sanity. Uh, and then as far as the jumping and eating socks, we actually covered both of these topics last week in our Q&A. Um, and we had a ton of um, different exa examples and scenarios to set up to put the kibosh on this behavior, um, both jumping and chewing socks. I think chewing socks was the exact problem they had yeah. last time. Um, <laughs> eating socks. Yeah, eating socks. So we talked about um, some different things to try. So go to our Facebook page um, when we're done with our video. Not yet. Stay tuned. Um, we might have other things that might interest you that we're answering. But... Um, Go to our Facebook page, and there'll be like a section on the left, or if you're on mobile, it'll have like our, you know, our page title, and then it'll say about, a location, events. If you can actually take your finger and swipe that over to videos, so on the computer, it'll be on your left hand side, and it'll say um, all those ty like tags or whatever sections, tabs would be a better word. Um, go to videos, and it should be pretty close to the top since we just uh, did that live video last week with all those details. So, um, And then for those of you who are new, if you haven't already, um, if you want to see our videos, again, you don't want to miss us because we're a hoot, <laughs> uh, you can subscribe to our videos and... What are you doing? <laughs> He's distracting me. Dude. He must be distracting you guys too. Um, they watch me, they listen to you. Probably. Probably. Uh, the cute one. What was I even talking about? You were going to say, subscribe. Is that, right? Is that where the button is? Or over there. Okay. On one of the corners. Yeah. On one of the corners. Subscribe to our video so you don't miss us because uh, we want to see you again. Um, this is now code for subscribe. If you ever see me doing this, that's what that means. Nobody's going to remember that. Don't, don't, get, don't get the hang of it. No. Give them a few months of me we'll doing see. this. We'll see. Uh, and there was something else we wanted to say. We uh, always like think, oh yeah, we need to say that at our Facebook Live video so that people know. And then we never say these things. So regardless, we're glad to have you here. We're super glad for those of you who posted your questions. Um, it definitely gives us stuff to talk about. So we appreciate that. Um, question number two. And you can also, you can find it in a lot of places. You can find this on our YouTube page too, all the previous weeks. In case you miss it. Yeah, that's and another great way to... If you're hanging to... out on YouTube and you're like, I don't want to get on Facebook to watch a video. I want to watch a video on YouTube. You can find it there. Just, just, just saying. Because, you know, people still spend a lot of time on YouTube. And Carrie Eisenberger. I'm sure I said that Eisenberger, right. Eisenberger, I'm assuming. Carrie says, there have been a couple instances where my pup has chewed through her retractable leash. Uh, in just a few moments. Oh, don't you hate when that happens? And she's even maneuvered out of her collar. When she gets loose, she runs away. Um, fortunately, they usually catch her within a couple hours. Oh, so it sounds like... That's uh, not good. That's not good. I mean, it's good that you caught her, but not yeah. that it took a couple hours. Yeah, like she's running off, like running, yeah, running off, yeah. away. Um, so she says, which of your classes addresses that and would allow me to trust her off leash and so that she wouldn't just run away from me. So chewing through the leash and running off. Um, big, big, big deals. We can definitely um, help with all of those things. For the, the collar, slipping out of the collar, um, it's not tight enough. It needs to be super snug. Like you should only be able to slip two fingers kind of squeezed in there um, into the collar. If it's too loose, like I'll use my shirt here as a collar. All right, here's my, here's my dog collar. All right, so if I'm a dog, let's see, which way do I want to go? Other way. Okay. This is hard. Everything's backwards on the camera. Okay, so if I'm a dog, I can, I can get two fingers through here. Pretty snug, but I can get them in, which means I can breathe, I can swallow. If you can get a whole hand 
in your dog's collar, it's way too loose, way too loose. So two fingers snugly through that collar, two fingers. If you have a bully breed, um, pit bulls have ginormous muscular necks and it is very easy for them to slip out of a collar, even if you have it super snug. Um, and for them, I would recommend um, a prong collar or a martingale collar, a collar that actually um, tightens when your dog pulls so that it can't slip off of their neck. Um, so very important, very important for your dog's safety, not just right, like a right, training right. importance, but we don't want your dog to get hit by a car, we don't want your dog to get attacked by another dog, we want you to have control of your dog, which is why there are, why city ordinance states your dog must be on a leash. It's not because they're mean, it's because it's for the safety of your dog and the public. So um, definitely make sure you get a snug fitting collar, tighten it, um, and if it's like a the plastic buckle ones, instead of like the metal, like they look like a belt that you or I would wear. Uh, the ones that belt close, they don't stretch over time, unless it's leather and then it might give a little bit. But the plastic ones that have like the plastic buckles that snap together, those really, are, it's really easy for them to loosen over time. So you might have it super snug and then two weeks later, it's loose enough for it to slip off your dog's head. So Check it often. Yeah, if you have that one before you go for a walk, just take your hand on there and wiggle the collar, see if you can flip, slip those two fingers or more through so you know to tie it before you even leave the house. Um, the retractable lead, I'd get rid of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use retractable lead. Um, it sounds like your dog's not respecting the freedom of the leash and so the retractable leash gives it way too much freedom. Um, it's kind of like if you were to think about teenagers. We all love them and we all hate them, if I'm being honest. I was a great teenager though. No, you wasn't. Um, you and I you wasn't. Didn't. We, I remember my sister's six years older than me and she went through her teenage years and my mom was just so frazzled and she, I remember just having this conversation with my mom as a child and she was saying, you're never going to act like that when you're a teenager, right? And I'm like, oh, never, it's so disrespectful. And then guess what? I became a teenager and I was like slamming the door in my mom's face, screaming I hated her and I never wanted to talk to her again. Teenagers are like that. So are, so are dogs. So um, teenagers have this sense of untouchable like they're untouchable to the world and this sense of entitlement. They're entitled to everything. Um, you know, free things, whatever they want, whenever they want. It doesn't help that this day's digital age makes everything available immediately, but they have that sense of entitlement. And that's where most dogs that come to us or most owners who are seeking help have this problem with their dogs that they think they're entitled to everything. Um, and so your dog, slipping out of the collar, running away, biting through the leash, thinks he or she is entitled to rule the, the world. He already thinks that he rules you, he rules the house, and so he can do whatever he wants outside of the house too, and he's gone. Um, and so that is not, that's the biting the leash, the, the running away is not the problem. Those are what we call symptoms of the problem. The problem is that lack of respect to you. And that respect doesn't have to be fear-based. A lot of people think, oh, if you're your dog's owner, your dog's leader, your dog's alpha, then you know you have to be cruel or mean. No, no, most parents aren't cruel or mean to their, their teenagers, but they do have to be firm and say, these are the rules, these are the boundaries, don't cross them or there'll be consequences. Um, and there are, I mean, obviously there are times where some people cross those boundaries and it is abusive, and that's not what we're saying at all. We're just saying be firm and set those boundaries. And so your dog right now thinks, I'm the leader, I can do whatever I want, and it has that sense of entitlement. We wanna take all of these privileges away, because that's what they are, they're privileges. Privileges are not something you're entitled to forever. Um, they are things that as um, Americans, we have so many freedoms that we have these amazing privileges to do things that are not uh, openly, getting a call, hold on, uh, openly available to other countries. Like the one I, uh, I take for granted too much is um, the freedom of religion. Like we can openly pray and talk about God in public and not have fear of a government. Um, killing us. I mean, martyrs are still being made in all these countries where this is not legal. So your dog has this privilege or this entitlement mindset that he can do whatever he wants. And we need to tell him, no, that's a privilege. This is a great privilege that we'll share to you when you respect it. But when you don't respect it and you bite through your leash or you try to run away, we're going to take that away. So one of those things we're taking away 
is the length of that leash. A 15 foot leash, which most retractables are like 10 to 15 feet, um, one goes against city ordinance that says your dog should be on a six to eight foot leash. Um, I don't think eight foot, I think it's just like four to six foot. Um, but they want them to be close by. And then that's also because, again, it's a freedom thing. If you can't endure the freedom of that full 15 foot leash trying to buy it and get away from us, that's extremely, extremely disrespectful for you. So tighten those reins, literally, and put him on a six foot leash. So if he starts biting on that leash right next to you, you can be right there to touch him, bend down and, and like poke him and say, hey, I'm talking to you, stop biting that. Or to tug that leash away from his mouth, like stop biting on that. Um, and have that instant correction or uh, and communicate more thank you rapidly. yeah communication versus if he's 15 foot away it's hard to sometimes see them if they go around a corner or um they're just so far away you're like is he chewing on that or is he just stuffing it it's hard to see so get him closer keep him closer tighten that that collar um or get a new collar that he can't slip out of um what was the other question they had and she said uh which of our programs would allow her to have her dog off leash? Okay, so um, all of our programs address the, the walking on the leash. That's, that's important for every dog to have. And that, again, goes back to setting that, that foundation for teaching dogs that that's a privilege um, that we give them. Um, for off-leash reliability, the only program that we guarantee, all of our programs are guaranteed with what's included in the program. So the only program that we guarantee off-leash reliability is our two-week Barksford program. Um, and that's just so that that first week is that foundational training, building that relationship and that communication and teaching dogs that you thought you were the manager and you thought you were in charge, but actually humans are because we are more intelligent and we know it's safe for you. And so you need to put your trust in us. And that's what we do with that first part, that first week of the program. The second week is off-leash training and, and uh, distraction training. So we practice that off-leash reliability. We go on field trips. Um, and so definitely you can find out more um, about our programs on our website, which we'll post in the comments of this Facebook Live video. So you can um, go there and check them out and see which program is ideal for your family. We don't pick programs for families. Um, we're kind of unique about that. We want you to pick the family that's going to give you your dream dog. Our, our programs aren't built off of like a beginner, intermediate, and advanced like, what do you want to call it? Groupings. Um, our programs are They're designed. They're not tiered. Thank you. They're like, our, pick what you want, and then that's what you get. Yeah, our programs are designed with your end result in mind. So find the program that has your ideal end result, and that's the program that's best for you and your family. Yep, only one program needed. Yes. Bam. <clears throat> um, I forgot to mention too. She also said that uh, she's very food motivated but she has severe digestive problems um and can't give her special treats i don't know if she uh was just giving us that little tidbit or if she wanted any uh more info yeah i'm not sure if there was a question there or not um as far as food um dogs don't need food to work um i know that's a big craze going on right now it's just to give them a treat give them a treat um, a lot of our training is done without treats. We, we build relationship. Relationship is communication and trust, um, verbal praise and affection, physical praise and a, te uh, a touch. Um, and so a lot of people underestimate those things that are already on your body, your voice and your touch, to reward your dog and to build that relationship. So you don't need to use treats. If you feel like you need to feed your dog something, just use his kibble. Um, put their daily rations of kibble in a Ziploc baggie, and that's what you'll give them throughout the day. Um, at first, they might scoff their nose to you like, um, I eat that all day, every day, I don't want that. But if that's the only thing you're offering them, and I mean only thing, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. Um, and then the same thing with verbal praise um, and physical touch. Dogs will work for praise if you teach them the rewards in it for them um, through that relationship building. So, and we can definitely help you with that. I know that's a big challenge that a lot of our families have when they come to us and it's our joy. It's my favorite part of training, honestly. It's not working with the dog. I love dogs, but it's seeing that relationship build between the owners and the dogs. That's, that's beautiful to me. Getting all sentimental. Gordon Tanya Kryn Litchi says, I know I said that right too. She says, I have a Border Terrier mix named Buddy. He's over eight years old. I'm gonna try and summarize. Ba -da 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 -da. He has anxiety and he's on medications, okay. but he's having bad side effects. Okay. He's been hospitalized. Um, because of the medicine or because of the anxiety? 
I'm thinking because of the medication, maybe. Okay. Um, but the the question is, so she's got a granddaughter um, that sees the dog on the regular basis, and Buddy always acts excited to see her when she arrives, but then that can suddenly change to aggression. Okay. He's snapped at her and left marks on her face, has oh. not broken skin, yeah. um, but I don't want it to reach this level. Yeah. Is he jealous and like thinks that he's uh she's taking his place um she really seems to like him and will reach out and touch him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even shares her snacks with him will this subside in time no no it's only gonna get worse honestly um from what you described that's very frightening to me um i i i love dogs and i have three children of my own so this is very near and dear to my heart and dogs are animals they are animals, so they are very capable of horrendous things. Um, even the best of dogs. Dogs don't have hands, they have mouths, and they often speak with their mouths. Um, and we are very fragile, we have very fragile skin, and they can do severe damage. So the fact that he's already nipped your granddaughter in the face, I wouldn't even let them be in the same room together at all. Like I would have him in a crate, like closed into another room. Um, and that is not me being mean, that is me being loving to the dog and the child, because if he has an opportunity to bite again and break skin, the consequences for your granddaughter could be life altering. She could have a permanent scar or disfiguration on her face. And for your dog, it could be death. Like they, they, I mean, if this bite is severe enough, like euthanizing him is gonna be the only option. So to save both of them, keep them separated. There is no need for them to be in the same room. She's, you're only babysitting her, it sounds like she doesn't live there. Um, and so you definitely have rooms to work around that. I would definitely seek the help of a professional so that we can actually help you overcome this. It doesn't sound like he's jealous at all. What it sounds like is, um, coming back to what we talked about with, um, who was the last question's name? Carrie? Um, the, the dog is just being disrespectful. He thinks he's in charge, and because he's in charge, he can do whatever he wants about whatever he wants. Um, and that's the attitude he has. It's very rude. We don't want that attitude, um, obviously, because you can see what it's capable of. We need to teach him to see the world through your eyes because you're his leader. You know what's safe for him. If you invite your granddaughter into your house, she's now part of your property on your property. Instead of right now, your dog thinks that your house is his property and so your granddaughter coming into his house is his property and he can do whatever he wants with her. And that's obviously very unsafe. So we need to flip that around to say, this is my house. These are my toys. This is my food. And this is my furniture and my carpet. And this is my granddaughter coming to my home. And so when he has a point where kids, I don't know how old your granddaughter is, but I have a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-year-old. So they can be very annoying. Like, I'm sure our family loves when we come and stay with them, and I'm sure they love when we leave um, because they can just be so tiring, right? Like, they just never give up. Um, right now, it's the why phase. Why, why, why? And I just want to, like, pop my head. Um, but the same thing for dogs. We don't ask dogs to love kids 100% of the time because even human adults can't love kids 100% of the time there are times you just have to escape and so we need to teach him how to escape himself excuse himself when he feels like he's at that point of of having that snapping moment which is unacceptable um, but there are times where dogs are fed up and they're just done and so we just need to teach him to escape or excuse himself from that environment in a safe non-threatening way to himself or your granddaughter so um, definitely need to seek professional help there so we can make sure everybody's safe in this training process but in the meantime I would complete com keep them completely safe separate um, I don't know if you've seen this and I hate to bring it up because I hate sharing these things but um, just floating around on Facebook, gosh, this week um, was an article about a dog that was adopted and took it into the home and three days later killed their three-year-old daughter. So um, it, it's serious. Dogs are animals and I love dogs to pieces, but they are very powerful and can do some very serious things. So um, definitely keep them separate for everybody's safety. It's not something to take lightly at all. Even though he hasn't broken skin, I mean, he's bit at her face. That's a big deal. So. Um, not that your dog is evil or should be, you know, like, and we're not saying anything harsh about that, but we're saying you definitely need help. And he, he definitely can learn better manners. And he may not be the dog that ever likes to be around kids. And that's okay, too. And we need to respect that. But I would not allow them to, to have opportunities together at all um, until you do seek the help of a professional, whether it's us or someone else. But definitely um, get some help.
a lot of the calls that we get uh, about dogs that have bitten people or children or anything, uh, a lot of times people will say, you know, it kind of came out of nowhere or, you know, he's never done this before. He's always liked kids or he's always liked people. Um, but there's there's always, your dog's always giving you signs. Mm-hmm. They're giving you signs one way or another. Some are more subtle. Mm-hmm. Some are, more, are very obvious. Fortunately, um, you have had a warning before something bad has happened. Right. Um, which, which is serious the warning was given. But. It, yeah, it's like he didn't attack yet <laughs> yeah. um, or really do damage. So that's very fortunate. Mm-hmm. But... Um, so many of the stories that we hear when we get calls are are like he's never done anything like this or he's never gotten this serious but the, the day will come if if the mm-hmm. if he's continuously put in this situation um without like crystal says the the proper guidance and relationship uh the whole dynamic in the home um yeah, the, the more that goes on, the more chances that he's going to do more damage. And quite frank, frankly, he's going to escalate because in his mind, it's working, right? I'm sure your granddaughter was startled, afraid, or even cried when he nipped her in the face. And in his mind, he thinks, winning, that worked for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so not because, again, not because he's an evil dog, but because he's an animal. And that's 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 how they are. They're, That's how their brains are geared. They're uh, always very learning. simplistic. We as humans are very complicated in our communications and interactions. Animals aren't. They're very simplistic. So, um, and it sounds like you know he's he loves her and then he doesn't and then he loves her and he doesn't. Um, it sounds like you have a lot of resources out too that could be the the cause for that co- conflict. Um, like her sharing his her food with him. That's a big no no. I would never put food in the child's hand by a dog that has already nipped her in the face because again, remember he thinks he owns everything he thinks he owns that food in her hands and if she gives him a bite and then she takes a bite he's gonna be like excuse me that was my bite because that's my food again just a mindset that needs to be changed um, but that's kind of how he's thinking so um, definitely keep them separated Um, you know if he has to go potty when she's present he gets put on a leash she gets to play in another room as you walk him through the living room out to the back door whatever door you go potty in and then he comes back in and goes in that crate like he doesn't even see her on the leash like, I would have him on a leash in the house to travel through the house to outside. Um, again, just for everybody's safety because we don't want it to escalate. And unfortunately, we hear way too many stories um, of, you know, floating on Facebook or people that have called us with horrendous things that have happened to children um, because they didn't know. They didn't see those warning signs. So don't, uh, don't be one of those statistics. You obviously are reaching out, so you know it's a concern, and we, we really appreciate that and applaud you for it. And you're taking the first step in getting help to fix it so that it doesn't become that big of a problem. So I don't want to, like, sound really negative and condemning, because I'm not. It may sound um, This extreme, happens very often, but... but we definitely know that they can be helped. Um, and even if he doesn't like kids, we can definitely talk about management protocols to teach him how to uh, deal with himself in the presence of children so that he can excuse himself from that environment um, our one pit bull caster loved kids like loved kids like it was his biggest distraction we tell him to sit and he would like shake if there's a kid like just let me go say hi they just want to touch me I know they just want to pet me let me go um, and it was such a struggle for him to hold that command as he got older he got cancer he got kind of crabby and he didn't like kids anymore because they crawled on him we have a one-year-old um, and so when he was done he literally would just stand up and walk away And if they would come sit by him and try to pet him, even if the kids were being extremely polite and doing everything right, he would just get up and walk away and go lay on another bed. That's okay. It's his right. He doesn't have to be loved by a child if he doesn't want to be. So, um, like I said, there's lots of management protocols that we can teach him about how to handle himself around those environments. Um, And then going back to that foundational problem of him just not respecting you or your house. It's a communication problem, and we can definitely help that be advanced to a healthier relationship of, oh, so-and-so's here um, and she has a a treat. Is it okay if she shares a treat with me or should I go to the other room? You know, when he has these these thoughts in his head about how he wants to react, the main difference between a dog that doesn't have that relationship and a dog that does is simply the dog that does not have the relationship with the owner and the dog thinks that they are the owner of the house. Um, They think, I'm going to do that about that. 
I'm just gonna do this about that and that's done. Um, a dog who has that relationship and knows that the owner is in charge and is the leader for a good reason because that owner and leader it knows what's safe for the dog will see those things happening and look to the owner and say, hey, do you do you want me to bark at that? Do you want me to bark, you know, nip at that? Do you want me to go lay down? Like, you tell me what to do. You're in charge. That's what you're lacking, and that's what that's what a professional dog trainer can give you. So, mm -hmm. definitely, cool. definitely. Well. I think that's our time. That's the questions that we had. Really? Okay, that was fast. Yeah. I think it was one of our fastest yeah. ones. So Let's keep it under awesome, the guys. <laughs> Don't forget. What's this mean? Subscribe, Subscribe. <laughs> in whichever corner it is on your device. Yes. Whichever that is. Yes. Um, and awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, next week we will not have a live QA. We have a um, awesome retreat that we're going to. So a little R and R, is that what it's called? Rest that's what, that's and what relaxation. People Rest and recreation. Either or. Relaxation. Or. He can do recreation. I like to relax. Uh, <laughs> so we're both going to do whatever we want in this retreat. Um, but yeah, we won't be here for next week's Facebook Live. But the following week we will be. And we're actually going to change it up a bit. So um, instead of our give us a random question, we're going to have themes. So we might pick a topic like jumping or nipping or mouthing or pulling or chewing. Random things. And then we're going to have you to have you ask us a billion questions about that one theme. So like, what's the one thing about jumping that your dog still um, is doing or one thing you wanna fix or is it okay to let him jump sometimes and other times not? And post all of your questions related to that topic and that'll help us get more in depth for you guys and your answers. So we don't have to be so broad and spread um, out. So, um, and then yeah, I think that'll go really well. So yeah, let us know yeah. what you think about it. And be prepared to ask us more questions about these topics that are coming up so that we can answer them for you. Yes. I'm Crystal. This is my husband, Eric. We're from the Dog Psychology and Training Center. And thanks for joining us today on our Facebook Live. Bye.